Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, Civit, or we does the Elementum, I get a new tomahawk, and we take a look at the 10 best self-defense knives um, around. And I consider those all in my collection. So we'll take a look at those. Uh, but first, before we get to any of that, it's my weekly opportunity to sort of show off what I'm carrying. And today I've got one. Um, I've been in the house most of the day, so I've been carrying this. Ordinarily, I can't leave the house in my state with this. Uh, but this is the ProTech TR3. And to me, it's uh, it's the most classic of the ProTech TR models. This and the TR2. I do love the TR2. Tactical response is what that TR stands for. Uh, this is a version. Oh, see, this spring is so strong. It just uh, it didn't lock up because I was holding it kind of cattywampus in my left hand. But ordinarily, it's uh, right as rain. So that's 154 cm. Uh, nice thinly ground 154 cm and very, very sharp. You know, I love this steel. And uh, the way they grind it here is. Uh, is really it's it's robust enough to be something you can call tactical response uh but you can get a lot of uh slicing work done with this knife uh, it's a really great all-arounder and i find it in my pocket especially around this time of year when i'm cutting open a lot of boxes and packaging uh, my daughter just had her birthday there's been a scat of boxes and clamshells and those little twist ties they use to to batten down dolls inside of boxes so people don't casually cut them out of their boxes at the stores. Not like anyone goes to stores anymore, but you know what I'm getting at. Um, but that's what this knife is for me. However, the, the thing that led me to get this knife in the first place was a video I saw randomly on YouTube once. Uh, and it was a, a, a confessional, not a confessional. What do you say? Uh, um, it was a uh, testimonial. That's what I'm going for of a former special forces guy who had lost his TR3 in the sand. Uh, I think it was just in the, tr in the training grounds, uh, but found it years later and uh, blew the sand out of it. And it opened up with no problems at all. You know, just blasted out a little bit of that sand and it opened. Um, these things are notorious for opening uh, in very, very bad conditions. Uh, what I mean is all sorts of crap and stuff jammed up in the pivot. They'll still open, they'll still lock, they're still effective. And I think that's why a lot of people count on these. A lot of people who count on their knives really like Protex. I do too. I know they've they've gone, um, they have a lot of, let's call them luxury knives. You know, they, they, they have some very high-end versions of all of their knives. And then some of their knives are just uh, more EDC. And then some of them are, are more, uh, you know, combat tactical oriented like this, but they're all just so solid, beautifully engineered and just great to look at, great to use. So today I've got this one on me. I don't carry it often, but but I'm uh, always excited when I do. Very cool one. And actually right now they're back out with the fish scale version, which was the version I originally fell in love with. But actually having been forced to buy this fluted model, forced meaning I had the money and I was good to go, but I couldn't find the fish scale anywhere. I bought the fluted model and I've actually really fallen for it. It's a great gription plan because your fingers wrap around and they sink into those grooves. And it's just, uh, it's great for, for grip. All right. So that's the TR2 and I have a fixed blade on me. I'm only uh, two knives today. So low profile of uh, my fixed blade today is the bark river knives mini bush sacks it's a great great knife this used to be my next to the bed knife you know it did its uh it did its term there and it has rotated out its tour its tour of duty on the bedside table it's a great knife the reason i had this on the bedside table is because i made this kydex sheath for it it comes in a leather sheath a great sheath but i made this kydex sheath for it so i could carry it comes off easily and i figured in the <laughs> in the dead of night if i needed a knife it's small enough and uh um you know maneuverable enough and i can pop it out of the sheath with one hand um with my left so you know that's that's kind of just the um 
contingency plan uh, if if other things don't work out. But uh, it, it is no longer by the side of the bed. But it does make a great carry knife. That's about a three and seven five uh, three point seven five inch blade. Uh, that's a one tool steel or a two. What is it? Yeah. Oh, one, a two. It's a two tool steel. And uh, I tried to put a patina on it once did not go very well. Actually, I ended up etching some nastiness in the blade that I haven't been able to polish out. Um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it carries great. Like I said, in the waistband, I have uh, an ulti clip, which I'm kind of on the fence about. I, I really do like the uh, discrete uh, carry concepts, discrete concepts uh, clips much better than the ulti clips but i have a few of these ulti clips um and they're all good uh but great thing about this knife i carry it at the three o'clock position on the hip and uh i carry it so that if i draw it in reverse grip i have the tip down and the edge in sort of pecal ish but if i need it for a utility cut i can just reach in and pull it out like a regular you know knife with the regular orientation so um a great fixed blade knife that I wasn't carrying for a long time. I bought it originally with the intention of carrying it. I did for a short while. And then, it, like I said, it did the uh, bedroom rotation. Now it's back in the EDC rotation. So great knife. Uh, Bark River Knives knows how to make an excellent, excellent knife. And I love their um, convex grind. And that's what they have on this. So that's my carry today. What are you carrying? Let me know. Uh, either give us a call, 724-466-4487, and leave a message, or just leave a message down below in the comment box. Let me know what you're carrying. And uh, also, while you're kind of lurking down there in the guts, uh, hit the like button, hit the notification button, and, uh, you know, everything else like that. It really does help. Thank you. Uh, okay, so next, I want to show what we're giving away for the month of December, the month of December, the giveaway knife for the Gentleman Junkie is, oh, it's so sweet. I love this thing. Uh, here it is, right here. The Cogent, the the uh, Civivi Cogent. And actually, as I look on it, uh, look at it on the screen, it looks like a blue handle here against that green background. But really, it is purple. Let me put a white Civivi box behind it, see if this helps. Well, uh, take my word for it. That is a really regal and holy purple there, you know. Uh, so it's a very, very nice purple, not blue. Purple and black blade, no serrations. Uh, the Cogent is the very first uh, Civivi knife with serrations. Here's my personal copy of it in that uh, here it looks uh, dark red. Yeah, the color is pretty good here. But uh, those... Those serrations, I don't know. I couldn't resist them. Ordinarily, I'm not a half serrated guy, but I saw that Civivi's first serrations were out. I figured I'd try them, and uh, I really like them so far. It's uh, it's kind of refreshing, oddly enough, to have a little serration on your blade. But I'll put mine back and uh, show you this one. So uh, this is the Gentleman Junkie giveaway knife. So on Patreon, if you are a $10 a month member, you are immediately, immediately, instantly without your uh, consent even, entered into a con contest to win a knife. We do a random uh, wheel spin on the third Thursday of the month on Thursday Night Knives. That's 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And we do a, uh, a live giveaway. And this is the knife, and I'm so excited to give this away. You know, I'm thinking about all the knives we've given away. We've done a lot of different things. It usually, uh, well almost always just follows my whim. What do I like this month? And, um, or what am I interested in this month? And I've, we've done a number of wee knives and co and, uh, Civivi knives and, uh, this cogent, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. And, uh, I got two, I got one for me and one for you. So sign up at Patreon. And if you don't, uh, don't want to, uh, if you can't, do 10 bucks a month there are other options three and five and with those options you get extras from every interview we record about 10 to 20 minutes extra uh questions i might not want to ask for the main podcast but that get uh get some attention uh for the patron viewers and uh and a lot of other stuff so check us out on patreon you will be happy you did you might uh win this knife here and uh, and we'll all have a cogent. Uh, quickest way to do that is to go over to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, I'm going to remind you again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon.
You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. This is like the Civivi show. I, I didn't really realize this until uh, looking at my show notes right now, but a lot of Civivi and we in this show. Uh, first up in Life Knife News is a new one by we that has me excited. Uh we knives, I have massive respect for. I have a number of OEM we knives, like my uh, Elite Line Scorpion from Off Grid Knives or my um, uh, Ingress by Niche, made by We. They are outstanding knives. So I and, and then the Civivis I have also made by the same folks. Great, great knives. Um, but oftentimes the wee knives designs i can look at them i can say oh that's nice oh that's clean oh that's whatever and give adjectives but rarely am i like "Ooh, uh, i have a visceral reaction i want but this one the snick which is kind of funny because that's the sound that wolverine's claws make in some of the comic books when they come out uh, but the snick here is that knife that's a three and a half inch blade um this of course would not be the the exact uh, iteration I would get it in too 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 many notes for me uh, visually, but uh, but look at this profile that that full bellied clip point blade evocative of these here these cogent knives you know these are nice clip point blades, uh, but I love that upswept you know you look at the spine there's an upward curve you look at the belly uh, of the blade the cutting edge and there is a parallel upward curve and then you have that beautiful clip it's a very nicely shaped blade that is somewhat i don't know evocative of of some some sort of fighting bowie from a different era a very nice plain handle that had or i should say neutral handle that has a a, a uh, an opportunity for inlay and you can get two different kinds of g10 uh black g10 which i don't why would you get black g10 if you were going to go all the way and get this beautiful thing but uh you can get in black g10 jg10 you can get it in green micarta that of course would be how i would get it uh, that's this picture right here uh, or you can get it with Mokutai, and then you can get uh, 20 CV or a special uh, kind of Timascus that has a name. Let me look it up. Uh, the name of it is uh, pretty neat here. Uh, um, da -da 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 -da. Well, okay. Oh, you can also get it with a wood inlay. Um, where is that? Okay. 20 CV or Heimskrigala. Wait, Heimskrigala pattern. Uh, Timascus. Sorry to make you wait for that butchering of, of, of a sort of Nordic name, but a really cool looking. It looks like a raindrop uh, pattern Damascus in a circus mirror, basically. So pretty interesting. Or, or the way, um, or the way rain runs down a, a windshield when you're in a parking lot, but you're not using the windshield wipers anyway a beautiful knife is the wee snick and and one that i would actually consider getting and i don't mean saying that to sound snotty or high-handed it's just when i'm going to spend a lot of money on a knife it's i usually don't think of we but i love this profile so give me the right materials and i'm all over it uh so that's the wee snick next is another elementum you know i'm always talking about the civivi elementum and the infinite uh, iterations thereof well actually i got this wrong i i gave jim the wrong notes to put in that graphic because civivi elementum is now we elementum we is now making the premium version of the elementum so it's it's graduated up uh it is now being taken on by by we they're doing the premium version it's going to be a frame lock titanium um titanium frame lock with 20 cv and uh, and an opportunity for Dama Steel. But uh, yeah, it's getting the full Wii treatment. So just when you thought Civivi uh, Elementum had gone through every possible iteration, large, small, button lock only, Timascus, different handle materials, including wood, man-made materials, you know, micro version, brass version, every kind of version you can expect. How could they, where could they go from there? And I think this is the culmination of the design. You need not go further. We and Civivi, you have you have finished. You're done <laughs> with the Elementum. It looks beautiful. I mean, I'm looking at it right now in this picture here, and it's got this frosty blue anodization on the on the plain titanium and that classic classic blade shape, which has won me over. By the way, um, I had the 
uh, button lock only version of that knife. It's sort of an XL uh, in, in here. It was on loan from Dave, this old sword blade reviews. Thank you, Dave. And uh, that won me over. And then I've experienced some others, one of which you'll see uh, here in a few minutes. And I am sold. Uh, it is great. It does deserve the Wii treatment. Now, lay it to rest. Don't lay it to rest. Just let it let it coast and let it make you money. And let's try something else. Let's do let's let's go hog wild on the snick. That's a cool looking knife. Let's go hog wild on the snick. I know. I hear you. You're saying it's not as elemental. It's not as uh, universal as the elementum, Bob. We can't just put all of our eggs in the snick basket. I say you can, but. I don't know. Only time will tell. All right. So Savivi is taken on the or has uh, has has given the elementum to we. We has taken it and premiumized it. So we are looking forward to checking that out. Uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast is the state of the collection. I have something extremely exciting uh, to show off, and then uh, we'll look at ten of the best self defense knives that are folders. Looking for a new knife. How about one from Benchmade, Spyderco, Wii, or Bark River? Get that new knife and support the Knife Junkie channel, and save money on a new knife all at the same time. Visit our Knives for Sale page at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives for this week's specials. Through our affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on great knives. You save some money on your knife purchase, and the Knife Junkie channel makes a small commission, it's a win-win. Check out the new knife specials each and every week at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That new Lon Humphrey minigun that was just up on screen is so cool. One of the viewers, and now I'm spacing on the name, please forgive me, uh, sent me uh, a DM on Instagram saying, Bob, this looks right up your alley. And sir, you were right indeed. All right, so state of the collection, I'm going to show off two new implements. First one's a knife. Uh, and this, uh, since we're talking about Civivi, this is uh, an actual Civivi Elementum. And this is a gift for my wife. Shh. Now, I know she doesn't watch or listen, so I'm just going to talk freely about this. I got this for her. She's been loving her R.J. Martin designed Kershaw Speed Safe volt i think it is uh for years and years and years i mean i've gotten her other knives she always goes back to that kershaw speed safe and in recent months i had spoken with her you know if i get you another knife you know what, what, do you, what do you? she still wants speed safe and I, at, at a certain and that's good speed safe works great but at a certain point the wife of the knife junkie needs to graduate to bearings so i got her this this is the civivi elementum with the black blade black d2 blade and look at those handle scales that is ebony wood really really nice it's just a oh it's got a nice feel to it this ebony wood has a very um warm feeling to it it's it's kind of grippy when you push into it and it just looks gorgeous. Uh, I was kind of going back and forth between uh, this. Well, I knew I wanted to get her a handle, a wood handled knife. I wasn't sure if it should be this or the, they have some other uh, handle material that's wood. And I can't remember the name of it. I won't even try. Um, but I was going, it's lighter. It looks kind of like teak. And uh, I was going back and forth and I settled on this. Uh, I settled for this ebony. I think she'll love it. But uh the whole thing is I got to get her into this kind of action. And since there's no frame lock to mess with the action on this, I think this might win her over. And she might say, speed safe, you're a thing of the past. Because really, um, you know, if you want to buy an assisted knife these days, you pretty much, with a few exceptions like the off-grid uh, rapid fire, you know, but my wife is not going to carry that knife. It's a big damn knife. So you don't, your options have really been limited now because it's just not where the, uh, where the action is. Huh. How do you like that? It's just not where people uh, are spending a lot of money on the speed safe. I mean, that's not true. They are spending a lot of money at big box stores for speed safe, but we're not getting the best designs, best materials from our favorite knife makers going into 
assisted open. So here you go, baby. This uh, I want you to fall in love with this knife, and I think you will. It's got great cutting power, and uh, it is an excellent little knife. For as much as I have dished on it, I actually really love it. All right, so that's the Civivi Elementum in D2 steel, coated D2 steel, and ebony uh, wood handle scales. Next, this is something I have been looking forward to for a long time. Um, and uh, it's all the R&D was finally finished, and then all the prototypes finished, and then the first batch finished. And I got in on the first batch. I got to pick my number, lucky number seven. You say, what are you talking about, Bob? Well, I am talking about the new Wingard wearables Tomahawk, and that is the Stingray. Here it is with its carry system. It's Kydex carry system. I'm going to take that off. That's held on there with, uh, with elastic shock cord. And um, so they, they're they pulled together to, to compress against the, uh, the tip and the blade of this beautiful Tomahawk. Now, let's talk about this Tomahawk. We know that Wingard wearables, here's, here's, here's another Wingard wearables. You know this one, I show it off all the time. This is the back ripper Tomahawk. Um, so he, uh, Zach Wingard is fascinated with Tomahawks and their various uses. Uh, his fascination grew from the um, study of North American Indians in the, in the Northeast woodlands and uh, spike hawks are his thing. But, heretofore like up until now all of the spikes on his tomahawks have been these sort of hooking trapping ripping kind of spikes curved spikes oftentimes uh the spikes on tomahawks as he just as he talks about were not used for percussive uh, puncturing the spikes were used for dragging and hooking and um reinforcing grip and lots of different things um so Oftentimes they were curved and not meant for those percussive uh, sort of actions. So he wanted to create, he meaning Zach, wanted to create a tomahawk that had both a blade for chopping and also a spike for throwing and for percussive strikes, uh, you know, putting holes in things basically. And uh, so through about uh, two years or so of research, this is what he arrived with. And it was cool to see it go through different iterations, um, experimenting with different uh, different eye size, uh, hole sizes in the um, tomahawk head uh, to handle the impacts of throwing. And, and so lots, lots, lots of research and development went into this. And uh, let, me, let me tell you about it right here. He sends this with all of his products. It's a product card talking about the different features and uh there are some cool ones in this one um he's very concerned zach uh, is very concerned about making tomahawks that are light and wieldy and um so full tang steel slab tomahawks which are very uh you know um popular these days are great and they're great tools for breaching and doing really heavy duty tasks but for fighting you want something lighter and more nimble, and that has always been the Wingard wearables sort of mission. Uh, so it's a small thing. It's a small tomahawk here, uh, but you've got this chisel spike. So the spike here, if you look at it, it's chisel tipped. Um, it allows for greater impact without, without dulling and without breaking. It also reduces your chances of self-harm if you're, if you're you know coming back like this, if you happen to hit yourself with it. It's less likely to puncture you accidentally. However, with intent, you can puncture just about anything with this. Uh, it's got an octagonal cross section, and uh, that aids in removing it from, uh, you know, the way it's chamfered here, aids in removing it from whatever you've buried it into. It also makes it a comfortable grip for your hand like this. Uh, if you're going to use this like an Ulu knife, or you're going to reinforce a slash like this. You know, if you're going to be chopping or slashing and you can hold on to it like this. Um, and then interesting, uh, cool thing about the design of this blade here is that it's it's got this full curve here uh, for ease of entry. And then when you pull it out, it's got these two curved trailing edges here for easy removal. If you bury this in, 
you know, a, a, a softer target like a pumpkin or something, and you're going to pull it out. Uh, this, these um, uh, trailing edges here allow you to remove it uh, pretty, pretty easily. Okay, so this is cast steel. Uh, he says somewhere, let's see. Um, the handle and wedges are straight grain hickory from Pennsylvania. He does all the handle work himself, and he hangs the uh, the head on the on the shaft. Uh, he says this is the tomahawk is fifty one sixty cast in Monet or Monet, Missouri, and heat treated to fifty nine Rockwell. So that's a that's a cool thing about uh, about um, Wingard wearables. He they um, farm out a lot of the uh, the metal part of the work. They have different uh, smiths and foundries around uh, around Pennsylvania and other states where they have these things produced. They bring them in into house. He creates the the haft and finishes the whole thing. And uh, well, I think it's a fascinating business. I love the stuff he comes up with and uh, I can't wait to throw this one. I need to uh, I need to get over its newness. I, I, it's going to be hard to throw it that first time. But then once I do, I I will realize it is it is living up to its full purpose <laughs> and I'll keep throwing it. Plus, I have Zach's email, and if I break the haft, I'll just send it back to him. <laughs> but it is very stout and very sturdy. I don't, uh, I don't expect that to happen. It's also just a great size. So I'm very, very. Oh man, I just took out my mic with it. I apologize if I just took your ears out too. But uh, I'm very excited, very excited to have this in my panoply, and uh, it goes great with my other uh, two Wingards, uh, Wingard wearable tomahawks. Uh, the third one, the Empress, which is a spontoon hawk um, inspired by the megalodon shark that lives by my bedside table. So I have I did not bring that down. But uh, check out uh, Wingard wearables. They have a lot of cool stuff. Uh, the quill, which I've shown off a lot. They have the dick pick, which is a uh, a really cool pick and then a bunch of tomahawks. So check them out. Very exciting stuff. And uh and that brings us to the 10 best self-defense folding knives. And these knives here, okay, I have some criteria. So the criteria is good grip, good gription, good uh, ergonomics. It's got to be comfortable and it's got to be a knife. These are all just folders, by the way. It's got to be a knife that seats in your hand very well. You will, you will see I have no ringed knives here. There are no karambits in this list. Uh, because a a karambit, I think, um, from my experience, does require quite a good bit of, of skill, and um, also quite a good bit of experience for you to actually employ that skill in the heat of the moment. I personally don't uh, think I, I have the confidence uh, to do that. I have uh, done a lot of you know in martial arts studio karambit stuff, but um, you know I'm. I'm not confident that's the first thing that would pop out of me if I needed it. So uh, also with the damage you can do to your fingers with those rings, uh, I, and I only know that anecdotally, um, but I just didn't include any. Okay, so it's got to have good grip. It's got to have a blade shape that is especially suited to the task of slashing, cutting, uh, or stabbing. By stabbing, I mean thrusting, so we won't use that word. Um, and so let's start. The very first one is based on this concept that I have been in love with ever since I discovered it. For myself, that is. And that's a Pical style. Uh, that's tip down, edge in um, style of knife. And the first one is the Kaiser inversion. You're saying you're shocked. The Kaiser inversion, you say, Bob. Why did you not put out the Emerson Elvia? I do love the Emerson Elvia. Actually, frankly, I love it more than the Kershaw inversion. Um, this is outstanding. The one thing it's missing is the wave. Why did they not put the wave on this first uh, batch? And and I don't know, in the future, I've seen pictures of custom versions of it with the wave so that you can pocket deploy it, which is the only thing that makes sense for a folding Pical style knife, if you ask me. Um, so it just it just missed the list because it doesn't have a way to to pocket deploy. And I think that on a Pical style knife, that is 
uh, a folder that is essential. This knife is designed by Dirk Pinkerton. I love Dirk's work. I have a custom Pical style double-edged uh, knife that I carry and show off quite a bit. But this one uh, as a folder is excellent. This is one that I'm thinking of having modded. I just love this terraced handle. Uh, that terraced titanium looks very good, but it feels great too. It's a really great grip pattern. Uh, and this is a small handle. You know, I have medium sized hands and and look at that. You know, if you have big meat, uh, big meat hook hands, you might be hesitant to grip this in your fist unless you were very certain that it, the fat of your hand wasn't going to come over onto that side of the, the uh, blade. And with this, you definitely want to cap that that uh, top with your thumb. You know, you want this to not in any case, you do not want to slide down on that blade. Uh, but that is a very interesting blade to me. It's a, uh, it's a reverse tanto. Yes, I said it reverse tanto, uh, curved down in that Pical style way. I think that's a great way to do it because look at that tip. That tip is not going to break. Yes, I said it. I know I shouldn't, I shouldn't say stuff like that. People who live in glass houses. All right. So, uh, Oh, and so the reason this, I'm sorry, before I put it away, the reason I chose this over the Emerson, obviously, is this giant brass lug here, which is great for thumb flicking. Uh, this also is a flipper, by the way. But for opening on the pants, this is, you can wave the blade out with that big brass, um, big brass thing here, uh, thumb plate. And by the way, this knife works great in this position, just in a standard position as a utility knife. All right, I'm putting it down. The Kaiser Inversion designed by Dirk Pinkerton. Love that knife. All right, second, this was a gift um, from our good friend Stu up in Vermont. Uh, this is a Delica. Okay, so I put the uh, aftermarket titanium scales on. These are made, uh, these are from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, but that's the blade right there a Warncliffe Delica uh, serrated. Now you can, uh, the the larger, the Endura and the Endella would also fit <laughs> here. But for me, this is what I have. I, I uh, When Stu got this for me, he said, I want to buy you this. Uh, Stu is a sheriff's deputy and he carries one in his back pocket, but he carries an Endura. And he says, do you want an Endura or a Delica? And I said, I'll take the Delica because I'm more likely to carry it. You know, this is like a back pocket knife and it will rip through anything. OK, and then having um, Michael Janich on the show a bunch of times, he's talked about that straight edge, that straight worn cliff edge for self-defense, because in a slash, you've got. I'll do it over here in that slash, you've got um, You've got, as you travel down that edge through that rounded medium, you always have this tip pushing forward. And whereas uh, something that has a trailing edge will glance off a rounded target, something with a straight edge will gouge and push and bury into that round target. So I am totally convinced. And also just through doing it, I've done some goofy things here where I've uh, shown how these how worn cliffs work great also recurves uh but um i'm totally convinced of the self-defense qualities and and uh, uh of the worn cliff and you add these awesome spidey serrations and uh put it in a small package that you will have on you and that you could easily hide and that's great and if you were to use it in reverse grip i am convinced excuse me I'm convinced that if you're going to use a folder in reverse grip, if you can, if the ergonomics allow, you should turn it around so that the edge is in. And that is simply so that if you are um, coming down like this on something and you hit something hard, I mean, good God, can you imagine that uh, that blade closing on your hand? I mean, it would be like this. It would be like that and it would snip your fingers or it would it would definitely, definitely hurt your fingers. Uh, so if the lock fails and you're going this way, you're not going to have that issue because you have that all of this um, lock spring there or on a on a frame lock, you have frame lock or a, a liner lock. You have that stop pin there to stop the blade from swinging. So 
If you ever have to use a reverse grip, a, a, a folder in reverse grip, turn that edge around so that if it folds on you accidentally, it doesn't cut your fingers off. Okay. Next, the Microtech so, um, um, Ultratech. This is a double-edged Ultratech with serrations on top. Okay, so now you can you can pretty much figure out why this is on the list. I mean, that is a... Uh, it's, a, it's an extreme blade. There's something interesting about Microtex to me, and I haven't quite figured this out. I don't have enough Microtex or spend enough time on, on them to really figure this out, but they always seem to approach the, the edge. The grind, the grinds on, on Microtex seem to approach the, approach the edge at oblique angles, but they are always so incredibly sharp. I mean, this knife is really weirdly sharp, uh, especially for... Um, the wedge-like geometry right behind the edge. I mean, it's really in insanely sharp. And then they put these very effective serrations on the back, and I really like them. They're very useful. I have used this knife. I don't carry it much, though, because I can't. And if I got pinched for something and I had this knife on me, it'd be the big house for Bobby. So uh, no, no thank you. But I do like the... Uh, the color, the action on this thing is incredible. I love the the um, Microtech blades like this that are mostly coated but feature uh, little highlights in there, like the edge and this this little uh, bit of the sagittal crest or whatever you call that center line. Uh, great pocket clip. I love the folded pocket clip, and it it you got the little Chris Reeve treatment there, the little double. Uh, that secondary section, you can fit this on some pretty thickly um, hemmed pants there. I got a great glass breaker, which I have used and I uh, featured in a video. And this is a great knife just for like for Kubaton purposes. I know, you know, whatever you feel about having a little Makiwara stick in your hand. But if you needed a pain compliance device and you know you know, where to jam it or, you know, use it as a striker. This is a great sort of, it's like having a little stick. It's so neutral. So Ultratech, I do like the other versions of it, especially the Tanto. Man, what a cool looking Tanto that is. But my favorite expression of the Microtech in general is, is double-edged for sure. All right, next up is a Hinderer. And I wasn't, um, if if this new one hadn't come to me, there wouldn't have been a hinderer on this list. And that's not to say that they aren't capable because surely they are. But this knife stood out to me. This blade stood out to me once I got it uh, for its extreme sharpness and it, its extreme acute tip. And that is the Eclipse Tanto. This is in S35VN. This is pre-triway um, pre pivot. So you got to you got to give it a little juice. You got to preload it, as we used to say. But what an outstanding blade! So you have great ergonomics with this knife. Let's let's start with that. So the ergonomics are important in a self defense knife. It locks in. If you're going to be in this sort of saber grip to maximize your um, your standoff distance, it feels great. You see this little little paradise here for your thumb between this this dip here and this slight um, banking up on the thumb ramp, the nicely three-jimped thumb ramp. Uh, those jimps are great for the naked thumb. They feel very good. They grip well, but they're not too sharp. And uh, your, your gloves will just bury in there nicely. So you've got great ergonomics in the uh, saber grip like this. Uh, if you need to come up and put a lot of pressure behind the blade, You've got this nice big swale on the back of the blade. And uh, some some people like to slash like that, put their thumb way back on the blade like this. Sorry, since you were wide. But just to have it like this and to really back it up. And then you have the use of that secondary tip there. Okay, so the ergonomics on this are awesome. They're also great in reverse grip. Gives you a nice place to put your thumb. Um, I don't like any more than two finger choils and these two finger choils work great um the blade the blade is what what really does it though that tip is a bit like a gladius it's just a triangle but it's got a lot of meat behind it if you look at the spine 
you've got that slight swedge there, but it tapers down to that tip in such a way that you get incredible, incredible puncture power. This is great for <laughs> if you're not getting in self-defense situations or between self-defense situations, this is great for clamshell packages. You can get you can get exact with that tip and you have no no worries about it breaking. Every once in a while, well, like very recently, using my Yojimbo 2 in clamshell, I was like, hmm, I better bury this blade way past the tip because I don't want to mess with that tip. With this one, there's no fear. Um, but on the self-defense angle of things, I feel like this tip, this, uh, this, um, yeah, this blade tip could just really be thrust into and through most things, uh, given given proper intent and power. Uh, the thing I love about the flipper is that it will stop your hand from sliding up there if the rest of the ergonomics don't. Um, I do like the flipper deletes that I've seen on hinderers. I don't think I've ever seen one on an eclipse. Um, but ultimately, I like that aggressive finger guard style flipper that that you get on a hinderer. So this is just a great knife in general and and a looker for sure. But that Tanto blade is just seems like very, very effective. It's got it's got a little bit of everything from that tip to the secondary tip to a long, straight, slightly downward canted uh, sharp edge. Great knife, and I think it would be great for self-defense. Let me take a sip of this here black morning wake-up liquid. Mm. All this bloviating about knives. Okay, so next is, well, it's I was just basically talking about its cousin or little brother, but that's the Yojumbo. So the Yojumbo only in place of the Yojimbo because it's bigger. Uh, but you have this beautifully designed, uh, Michael Janich designed, Warren Cliff blade, hollow ground as the day is long, very, very, very thin and slicey behind the edge, and yet very fat and I shouldn't say fat, quite uh, robust blade stock though. So that that hollow grind really does its job. Ah, to me, to me, this is not only um, scary, but it's it's beautiful. To me, I just really like the shape of this. And uh, I know I've talked about this a lot, but I'm going to do that little mod and give it just a little bit of a finger choil. I don't, this is the one sour spot on the design and it can be removed and not affect how it stops or how it, uh, how it closes up. The other thing about this knife, it has a mid handle partition that I just kind of knocked down a little bit with a Dremel tool. Uh, that's all a matter of, of personal taste and, and, ergonomics and how your hand is built but for me it, it wasn't it wasn't exactly great uh but what do you get out of this that you don't get from the yojimbo um the only thing is reach if you're if you're trying to reach further into something uh if that is your if that is your um you know if you got to do that this is obviously better and if we're talking about self-defense um you know i i just don't see how the Yojimbo would excel over this, except in perhaps bringing it to bear, perhaps in having it uh, on you because it's smaller. Uh, but for me, it's not an issue. I carry large knives all the time. And and this one actually carries pretty small because it's quite a thin knife. And I have the uh, deep carry MXG gear pocket clip on it. Great action, fun action. This is this is my favorite compression lock. I, I only have three. This is the Yojimbo and the pm2 but i could do this all day long drive my knife uh <laughs> drive my wife crazy Jeez, what a, how's that for a freudian slip <laughs> knife for wife all right this stays amongst us okay all right so that's it the the yojimbo 2 you can also get or the yojumbo i mean you can also get the yojumbo in an all black version where all the hardware the blade everything is black uh, for those covert, you know, night ops. Great knife. All right, next is is a big knife. And it comes to us from... He's an uh, he's a fine artist of tactical knives, all right? Uh, that's Bastien Cove and Bastinelli Creations. This is the big Dragotac. And it is his... It's a his his largest folder, largest folder. This is uh, let's see. 
This is 4.75 inches in blade length. And that is just a giant, giant slab of N690CO, fully flat ground. What is this? This is uh, uh, it's an inch and three quarters from uh, spine to edge. And it is just insanely sharp. This, this knife will shear through uh, anything. It's made by Lion Steel, and it's got their uh, roto block lock thing that you turn that and then you can't unlock it. Uh, something I don't really mess with. Um, but so why why is this a great self defense knife? Uh, so just so you know, there will be a large cold steel knife, and and to me that will be the best of all the cold steel knives. But it will stand in for all the large giant cold steel knives. They will all do in a pinch. Uh, in this kind of situation we're talking about here. But for a non-cold steel large knife, this is this is the ticket. It's very, very uh, stoutly built, unlike, say, the Kershaw, um, that large Kershaw, what the hell was that called? The large Bowie that just recently came out. That's a great knife, but that's like a gentleman's giant knife. This thing is very uh, stoutly built. It's titanium on one side, deep carry pocket clip, uh, you've got the frame lock, and then on the other side, you've got linerless G10, lion steel, made in Italy. Uh, so you've got uh, a, a very uh, nicely sized and portioned out handle. If you look at this handle, I can grip it back here very comfortably for long slashes, and then I can come up here to the main spot, or I can come up or I can go all the way back. There are a lot of different ways to hold this thing. Uh, the least comfortable to me is actually reverse grip. It's a little big for reverse grip for my taste. But that point is right down the center line, so it's great for thrusting uh, from all angles. You've got nice jimping on top. And then look at this big thumb disc here for, for deployment. That thumb disc is not only good for thumb deployment. Uh, of course, you can, with a, with a little wrist, you can get it to reverse flick, but I, I'm sure you're already guessing this can also help wave it out of your pocket. Uh, sometimes I'll carry this in the back pocket. Not when I'm out and about, though. Uh, this this If I'm out and about with this, it's in the front pocket. But in the back at home, I can wave it right out using this uh, thumb plate. So very cool. Great knife and just, you know, a beast. And... Uh, no doubt would make a great self-defense knife. If you have the pants room to carry it, the pocket room to carry it. So, sorry about that. A little camera action. Okay, so four more left. And these, they're getting more and more aggressive. Let's just put it that way. Next, of course, a cold steel. This is the Black Talon II. A knife, I believe, inspired by the Spyderco civilian. And uh, I would have to say an improvement. Now the Spyderco civilian was a knife that has this S shaped serrated S shaped curve. They also make the matriarch and others uh, with that S shaped curve. And by they, I mean, Spyderco, the story behind that knife and that blade shape is that uh, Spyderco was commissioned by the government of South Africa in the early nineties, who is experiencing a severe uptick in rapes on all sorts of, uh, uh, public transportation in urban environments everywhere. And they wanted to commission Spyderco to make a knife that anyone without training could use to severely mess up a person who was trying to rape them. And so they came up with this very sinuous pointy S curve with serrations. And um, so the civilian has kind of the civilian and its later matriarch version, uh, shorter version have kind of, uh, been a staple of the Spyderco self-defense uh, knives. The one issue with them is that the tips are very, especially right here, um, this area, this this last part of the curve on a civilian is very thin from the edge to the spine and kind of useless for utility, or, or I shouldn't say useless, but you would have to be very, very, very careful if you wanted to carry that for anything other than destroying a human target or a fleshy target if you wanted to use it in a warehouse to to open boxes all day long it, it would not be the right the right thing what cold steel did with the black talon too is turn this into an actual usable edc now granted it's four inches long and you know 
you might get a lot of sideways sideways glances. But if you were to use this knife in a warehouse, it would be, I think it would be awesome. And I used to work at a paint store, you know, when I was in college and we did a lot of strap cutting and a lot of box opening and stuff. And this thing would not only have impressed my coworkers, but it would have done an awesome job. I mean, that tip, just look at that for opening boxes, zero effort. Uh, for getting under straps, look at that. You just slide under that strap. You're not going to damage the the crate or anything and boom, pop that strap right off. So this, this has been built in a robust enough way that you could use it for utility tasks. However, it is optimized for self-defense. Um, it's XHP steel, CTS XHP steel from that period of time when that's what cold steel was when they upgraded. That's what they were using. Great pocket clip, great in reverse grip. That's a, that is a really nice shape for capping the the tip with your capping the pommel with your thumb and um yeah and then you have the thumb plate here to not only rest your thumb on but to wave this thing out of your pocket this uh with the clip on the other side was my uh um, winter coat breast pocket knife for years i think this year i'm changing it up uh but that is the black talon 2 from cold steel and uh highly highly recommend it Next, mm, mm, mm. a thing of beauty, and it is the Kukri. And in this case, it is the Tactical Elements uh, released and distributed, Fox Knives produced, and Jason Knight designed MK Ultra. Jason Knight, famed um, blacksmith, who, or not blacksmith, bladesmith, who is known for his incredible Kukri's modernized kind of kukri stylized kukris and uh, was also a judge on forged in fire um great guy he teamed up with doug markaida to create this knife and uh the first iteration of this this is the second and now i believe uh you can get these more far and wide initially they were only coming out through uh tactical elements a, an online purveyor of tactical goodies uh this is black anodized titanium with a oh, with a steel insert uh, you've got bearings in there. You've got really nice. I, I love the the uh, Fox Knives um, micarta. I love the micarta they use. I have that slip joint that's very similar to this, the gunstock slip joint. But this is N690CO. Uh, it's saber ground, incredibly sharp. I mean, just really very, very, very sharp. Um, you've got this nice fuller. This this sort of bullet shaped fuller is a signature um, of Jason Knight. A lot of his uh, custom knives have that fuller in it. And to me, you know, with all of the um, folding kukris I've seen out there, to me, this one is the perfect design. It's like the perfect expression, the perfect folding kukri. It is gorgeous. It feels great in hand. The ergonomics of this are insane. Yeah, and then it stays in hand the way that uh, swells up at the at the end. This is obviously a knife you're going to do a lot of slashing with as it's a kukri and it's got that really extremely downward uh, oriented recurve. This is a slasher, but don't be don't be mistaken. That point with that sort of uh, pistol grip, that point is right down the line of your arm. So it takes very little effort to thrust with this you don't have to cant your wrist in any way to get the uh, point properly oriented and uh yeah so this is a great one and funny enough this is one of those knives when i carry it i have to remind myself that it doesn't have a wave opening feature because that would be what makes this the most perfect the only problem is it would mess with the ergonomics I really like how that feels with the thumb. So this is just one of those knives that when you carry it, you have to, for me, when I carry it, I have to remind myself a few times by drawing it and flipping it that this is one that you draw and flip. Even, even if you feel like you should be able to pull it out and have it open immediately. Okay, so this list would be, I would be, I would be a, uh, 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 what am I, what am I saying? <laughs> what am I trying to say? I'd be a mama Luke if I forgot or, or did not have Emerson in this list. Now, initially I showed you the Elvia. It came close, but because it lacks the wave, 
uh, the, the Kaiser beat it out. But I do have another one here, and that is this. That, this is the piece arc. Now, I could have any Emerson down here, actually, because they are all optimized for this purpose. But to me, the piece arc just jumped out uh, when I was thinking about this because of that Hawkbill blade. So before we get to the Hawkbill blade, let's look at this handle. G10, you've got the grippy Emerson G10 handles. Uh, but the ergonomics here really lock you in. You've got a, uh, a belly here for your palm or for your um, fingers. And then you have the jimped area here at the pommel that really lock your, your fingers in there. Whether you're in reverse, and this is great for reverse grip because of that, that platform there, or in standard grip. And then the downward sort of uh, aggressive angle of that uh, edge to that very, very acute but reinforced chisel tip just puts everything in perfect line here. And then you have the thumb ramp with the with the wave on it. This is just a great self-defense option. It's like a pocket gununting, the gununting, that curved sword that the, the Philippine Special Marina, uh, <laughs> the Filipino Special Marines use. Uh, this is like a pocket version of that. And it's a fully chisel ground blade, meaning this side is flat. You've got the bevel and the edge on, on this side. And that makes for a seriously sharp knife. So any Emerson could have gone in there pretty much, except for the Karambit. Uh, and for Karambits, they are great. But I'm just not convinced about the whole Karambit thing in general because of the amount of training it takes to to use them okay last last this had to be last uh because maybe of all of these if i had to run out the door right now for whatever reason and uh it seemed dire this is probably what i would take uh if it had to be a folder now no, this doesn't happen this doesn't happen um where people say you have to leave the house it's a dire situation and you can only bring a folder but if it did i would bring the Cold Steel Vaquero Voyager. I'm going to put this down here. The Voyager XL Vaquero. So this one is the Lynn Thompson Signature Edition. He does, uh, when he was chairman of Cold Steel, he would do an annual sort of release. He would have his signature on it. It would be a special steel. Uh, usually this green FRN would be the handle. And, um, you know, had this. it had this colorway and his signature. I could do without the signature, but whatever. I've become signature blind to it because the rest of this knife is just so sweet. But I think it's kind of funny. His signature is like a school teacher's, you know, like uh, Mrs. Mrs. Lynn Thompson. <laughs> of course, that's a joke, and I am not uh, in any way impugning uh, Mr. Thompson. I think he's the bomb. But his signature is, is just it's got great handwriting. What can I say? Okay, so this is CTS XHP steel. You've got this incredible recurve, tried and true. Just it's it is a kukri with a with the reoriented point, basically. Just a, an incredible blade. This is the knife that uh, um, <clears throat> that Lynn Thompson himself, who, uh, despite the fact that he's a portly gent, is a very very accomplished martial artist especially in the bladed arts that man is serious and he can move he can move he knows his filipino footwork that's for sure uh but th this is the knife he would want in his hand in a bad situation and it's no wonder you first of all you got the xhp steel you've got it coated black for low profile ops but you have this incredible um serration pattern i've always loved cold steel's serration pattern you've got five small peaks and one deep uh cup and followed by another five little peaks and another deep cup i mean these it'll just cut through anything and then you add that blade shape uh, the blade profile and then the thin blade geometry and it's a it's a winning recipe this one as you can see has the uh, snaggle tooth tactical um pocket deployer on it so i can wave this out of my pocket uh not crazy about how it looks on here but i love how it feels on there and it's a great place to put your thumb now do you need a place to put your thumb not really because the ergonomics of the rest of this handle are so uh 
extreme and outstanding. You've got this uh, iron cross pattern in the surface itself, and then you have all these grooves and different ways you can handhold it. You can hold it way back here for uh, standoff swipes and such, or you can come all the way up here or be in the middle somewhere. So just a great knife. All of the Voyagers are great uh, because of their handle and their size uh, for self-defense. But if you have to pick one, it's got to be the recurved uh, uh, Vaquero. I like the serrations for self-defense too. All right, let's rattle down what we've got here. We've got the Kaiser inversion. We've got the Delica Spyderco. That's a worn cliff with serrations. Microtech Ultratech double edge with serrations on the top edge. Hinderer Eclipse Tanto. Spyderco Yojumbo, Bastinelli Big Drag Attack. Uh, Cold Steel Black Talon 2. That's a great one. They're all great. Uh, you got the uh, MK Ultra. The Emerson P Sark, by the way, P Stark stands for Police Search and Rescue Knife. And then lastly, but certainly not least, is the Voyager Vaquero from Cold Steel, serrated. Have any of these on you and you will not be out knived. You might be outgunned, so don't have this be your only plan, is what I would say. All right, well, so thanks for joining us. Thanks for sticking around and checking out uh, uh, my new knives and then my favorite self-defense knives from my collection. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I was excited to show off the Civivis to you. I'm excited uh, to see what the new year has to bring uh, in terms of these different knife companies. I love that We Knives has slid that snick out. Such a cool knife right before the end of the year. Might have to check that one out. For show notes to the show, go to theknifejunkie.com slash 275. And uh, you can find out all of that information. You can also go to Patreon, thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon, and all the rest of it. Uh, also, these podcasts are available on the podcast apps if you like to listen instead of watch. All right, I've said enough. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, my name is Bob DeMarco, asking you, begging you, even telling you, don't take dull for an answer. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.